lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to show you how you can create a shadow knockout using text. Knockout is one of my favourite, favourite techniques, whether it be what we're doing today, which is shadow text, or whether it be image knockout. Which I'm These are not as complicated as you might think they are. And they do look so effective. They make great gifts. They're just lovely. They're lovely to make. And as I say, they're not as complicated as you may think. We're going to be using vinyl today, but you could do this in iron-on. You could even do this in cardstock if you wanted to. So first things first, I've just created a rectangle template of my piece of wood that I'm working with. So I'm putting vinyl onto wood today, but as I say, you could use any material onto any blank. And I just like to come to my shapes and get a square and turn it into the shape that I'm working with. And of course, to do that, all I'm going to do is unlock it and then put in the width and the height that I need. So first things first, I'm going to get my base text. So it could be a word or a phrase. You could do love, you could do family, you could do home, you could do whatever you want to do. So I'm going to come and get a text box and you'll see that my font is set to impact, which is a system font. It's a free to use font. You can get it from defont.com. It does mean though that it's personal use only. Now you can use any font, but the trick with this is that you want it to be nice and bold and you want it to be as uniform as possible. Impact is a great one to use for this, but there are lots of other ones out there that you can then use for commercial use. If you don't know how to download fonts to your system, I'll link to that video now. And to find it, I've just set my search to system and then put in impact. And as you can see, this is a nice bold font, but when we've got it as capitals, which is what you want for your base word or your base phrase, you can see that it is nice and uniform. Now the first thing I want to do is reduce the gap between each of my letters. So the trick with this is not only do I want my font to be bold and uniform, but I want my letters to be as close as they can be without actually touching. So the first thing I'm going to do is just use my letter spacing. And you can see there that it's not uniform in the spacing. The F and the A, the A and the M are really close. And in fact, they're too close. But the I, the L and the Y, there's quite a big gap between those. So what I'm actually going to have to do is come to advanced and ungroup to letters so that I can manually move that eye. And all I'm doing is I'm using the arrows on my keyboard so that I keep them in line with each other. There is a shortcut on your keyboard that if you hold down two and then move your mouse, it will also keep them in line, but I can never ever remember what it is. So I just always use my arrows. And of course, if you're doing this on an iPad, you can use those guidelines to help you. So I want them close, but I don't want them overlapping. And I'd say that's about where I want it to be. What I'm then going to do is draw around it. Because I've ungrouped it, I need to weld it back together. And I am going to weld it because we're going to slice into it. So if I simply attach this, it's not going to allow me to do the slice because it will still see the letters as individually. And if I go to combine and unite, that will work. But then my layers panel can get quite busy. The thing with weld, as we know, is that you can't undo it. So if you weld something and then you save and you come out of design space, you can't undo it and you cannot go back. But there's no need for me to want to unweld this as such because I want it to be one complete piece. I'm then going to bring it over to my block and you can see that as it currently is it's not going to fit in there. So what I'm going to do is just unlock it 
and then manually get it to fit so that it doesn't look you know doesn't look silly like that you want it to still look natural but you can manipulate it to something like that so it fits a wee bit better and then I'm just going to change the colour on it what we're then going to do is go back to my text box and I'm going to go to my fonts again my system fonts and this time I'm going to search for I love glitter which is a fantastic font again you don't have to use I love glitter you can use any cursive font you want but this is a really popular font for knockout because it's so beautiful and it has so many glyphs and other characters that you can bring in that you could really create something special with this font if you don't know how to bring in characters and glyphs I'll link to it on the screen and I'll also link to it below and I'll link to it for Windows iPad and Mac as well I'm just gonna write my text and in this case it's gonna be the family name so I'm gonna have and then I'm actually gonna hold down my shift key and press my dash because that actually will give me one of the characters one of the hidden characters so rather than going to my character map and bringing them in manually some fonts there are shortcuts so for I love glitter to get this particular swish up all you need to do is hold down your shift key and your dash and it will bring you up this beautiful glyph and if I wanted to, I could have it at the beginning and the end as well, but I'm not going to today. Because Design Space can recognise the kerning in this font, that is perfect. I don't need to do anything to it. But if you're using a different font, you may find that you need to decrease or increase the letter space, or you might need to ungroup it manually move them and then weld this back together and again because of the slicing that we're going to do you would want to weld this I'm going to bring it over to my text and again I'm just going to unlock it and I'm just going to get it how I want it to look and I could have it coming out of my base text or I could have it sat within my base text which is what I'm going to do today but again it's a personal preference I'm just going to roughly get that how I want it to be what I'm then going to do is put that lock back on I'm going to come up to offset and I'm going to create an offset now the degree to which I create the offset is completely a personal preference I could have a large offset or I could have a small offset. It's completely up to you. I'm going to go for a slightly smaller one today. And I'm going to select apply. And again, let's just change the color on that so we can see it a bit better. And if we look in that offset, you'll see we've got just a few gaps. So what I'm going to do is open up my contour and I'm just going to contour away those three little pieces so that we've got a solid offset what I'm then going to do so that I keep them together for the time being is I'm just going to draw around both of these come to the top of my layers panel and select group so that I can move those around together I'm also going to get rid of that back template because I don't need it anymore what I'm then going to do is draw round both of them, come to the top, align and centre and that will centre it for me. Now you might decide that actually you don't, you don't want it centred, I'm not keen on the way that that centres so what I'm going to do is actually manually get it how I want it and I do want it a bit lower down as well. So I'm going to have it about there because that's how I want it to be. I'm going to click on our offset and our small text layer and I'm going to ungroup them. Now that I've got this where I want it and I'm happy with the positioning, I can ungroup these so that they become separate. What I'm then going to do is come to my layers panel 
and use my eye to hide it. Now I'm not going to move anything and because I've hidden it, it will come back in the exact same position, but I'm just going to hide it for now. I'm then going to draw around my offset and my base layer. I'm going to come down to the bottom of my layers panel and I'm going to select slice. And when I slice it, you see I end up with four results. So if we just hide them all, you can see that's our first one. That's our second one. Our third one is behind this because it's a direct copy of this one. And then we've got our base. So if I keep our base and I hide the others, you can see that those three slice results, apart from our base, we don't actually want or need them. So I can actually delete those and keep just the base. If I then bring back my text, you can see that we've created that knockout. That's how you create your shadow text knockout. It's fantastic. It's a really lovely effect. It's not as difficult as what you may think it is and you can use it for a variety of different things. We're going to go to make it. I'm going to use my Maker 3 today. You could use any of the machines for this. If you're using one of the machines with a dial, don't forget to turn your dial to custom so that you get the full list of materials you can work with. If you're using Joy, you can do this, but obviously you're limited to size. I'm not using Smart Materials today, so I'm going to select On Mat, and I will need to use a 12 by 24 mat for this. I can go to browse all materials and search for my cut setting and then we can start cutting this out. So I've got a 12 by 24 mat here, it's got its protective cover on. I'm going to take that off. You always want to try and reduce the amount that you're putting your hands or your fingers onto your mat. Sometimes it can't be helped, it is what it is, but there's fingers often have an oil or a residue to them so it can reduce your mat time also where possible try and move items around your mat so you're not using the same area over and over and over also where possible trim down your item that you're putting on your mat so you're not putting a whole sheet on there there's just no need for it and also the more you put it on a mat and take it off the more likely it is to become creased this is a high gloss vinyl so i'm going to use a fabric brayer or a non-stick roller if you've only got a scraper what i suggest doing is wrapping a piece of fabric around it because what you don't want to do is scratch the surface of this i can load my mat up and then let it start cutting So with vinyl, where possible, I like to keep it on the mat because it just gives me a nice sturdy surface to work from and it means I'm not constantly battling the vinyl. And what I like to do, especially with items this small, is I actually come in and remove all the inner pieces of my letters first because again, because I haven't removed the outer layer, I'm not battling to try and keep it in place. The other thing I like to do, especially when working with something this small, is I separate the top from the bottom. So I come in with my True Control knife and in between each of my words, or letters, words, I make a slight slit I'm not going through into the mat, I'm just cutting the vinyl. So it's just a nice gentle slit. 
which helps me separate the top from the bottom of my vinyl and means that when I weed in a second I'm not battling the whole thing. Rather than remove my vinyl from my mat from the front, I turn it over and remove this way because it gives me a lot more control. What you don't want to do is over bend your mat though, so do do it in sections and do come at it from different angles as well. I've just got some non-branded transfer tape here. I always use a whole host of transfer tape. I use the Cricut transfer tape. I use a paper transfer tape. I use non-branded transfer tape. It's just what's handy. I just, I hoard transfer tape. This one, even though it's got no backing to it, you can put it back on the roll and reuse it over and over again. I like the Cricut one because it does have the backing on, whereas this stuff doesn't but it can still be reused several times. I'm gonna place my transfer tape. I'm gonna give it a roll or a scrape from the front. Turn it over and do the same on the back. And then you always want to remove the carrier sheet from the vinyl from the back. It gives you a lot more control. And if you have any bits that aren't sticking, you can just pull it back over. I also roll my carrier sheet off rather than pulling it off. So I'm not battling the transfer tape and the backing sheet. I'm just rolling it off. I can then place that onto my blank. Again, come in with a scraper or a roller because I've got the transfer tape over. I can use a scraper without worrying about scratching it. And then again, I can roll my transfer tape off rather than pulling it off. Just a trick as well, if you're struggling to get your vinyl off your transfer tape, get a scraper, wrap your transfer tape around it, and as you pull back, or roll back, push your scraper down. And I do find that this really does make a difference. And then I can come in and give that a roller or as I say you can use a scraper but because this is now exposed wrap a bit of fabric around it. We can then place that down. Again, use our roller. And then again, we can just roll our transfer tape off. I can still reuse this, so I can place it back on the roll and I can then use it again until I can't use it no more. And there we go, there is our knockout shadow text. Join me on Wednesday to see how you can do this on iOS, it's the same process, it's just the 
controls are slightly different so I'll show you how you can do this in iOS and then on Friday we're going to do this using images which is really really cool. As always thank you so much for joining me don't forget to like subscribe hit that notification bell if you've got any comments or questions please do leave them below and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!